Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to be with you on this Tuesday morning, December 1st, 2020. Uh, one more month ago in 2020. Um, but good to be with you today as uh, kind of regroup uh, from the weekend. I uh, hope you had a, a blessed Thanksgiving and uh, opportunity to give thanks uh, to the Lord for his goodness to us. We'll see if we can get a few folks on this morning. Good morning, Luke. Glad to have you here this morning. Um, and we got a few more jumping on. Uh, nice to be with you today. Uh, and our phone people, hopefully you're able to, to hear us uh, and able to join us this morning as we, uh, as we gather up uh, together um, today. Uh, we are in the book of John. A lot has happened uh, in the book of John uh, as we turn to John chapter 20 verses 10 through 23. Uh, so if you want to get your Bible ready, that would be great. Uh, morning, Dale. Morning, Bertie. Uh, we've got a few folks on today, uh, so it's good to have you guys with us. And hi, Deb. Uh, I know you're there. Uh, I saw you earlier this morning, so uh, nice to be with you as well. Well, um, let me begin. Uh, it's 10, 12. Um, I'm not seeing Joe, so I don't know. That's, that's a little bit strange. No, Joe Grish. Um, we're going to begin uh, f with our verses for this morning, uh, beginning at uh, from Genesis chapter 26, verse 3. Genesis 26, verse 3. And it says, uh, The Lord said to Isaac, Reside in this land as an alien, and I will be with you and I will bless you. Let me say that again. Genesis 26, 3. The Lord said to Isaac, Reside in this land as an alien, and I will be with you and will bless you. From 1 Peter 1, 17, it says, Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. A couple of things that stand out this morning as we look at those verses um, that life is a, as a journey, uh, uh, to use some biblical language, we are on a sojourn. Uh, we are on a journey home, and uh, we're certainly celebrating that uh, today as we begin the season of, of Advent, uh, as we prepare our hearts and our lives for our Lord's return. Uh, we celebrate His coming uh, 2,000 years ago, but we also prepare our hearts and our lives to to receive him as he comes again, uh, as he ushers in his new kingdom. And as we wait, uh, we find ourselves on a, a journey. Now, a couple of things uh, that go along with that. We are called to be in the world and not of it, to be different uh, than the world in, in which we live. Uh, but God is, is with us. That's what the Lord said to Isaac. I will be with you, and I will uh, bless you. So we have a God who is with us on our journey. Uh, we are grateful uh, for his presence with us. And then uh, in 1 Peter, Peter says to live in awe or fear, reverent fear. Now, oftentimes we think of that word fear as to be afraid of God, but it's really uh, this idea of, of awe or reverence. We need to be in awe of who this God of ours is during uh, this time of exile. Uh, that he is truly, he is truly with us. And uh, because of that, um, we can live our lives differently uh, in, this, in this time of sojourn, in this journey. Uh, today we turn our attention to... Um, the book of John. Now, a lot has happened since we last met last Wednesday. Uh, Jesus has been crucified, uh, sentenced to crucifixion. Uh, he is crucified. He dies. He is buried. Uh, and he rose. Uh, if you were read yesterday's scripture from John chapter uh, 20, 19 and 20, uh, it is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, that's some really good news for us, uh, that Jesus has, has risen. 
Uh, he did what he said he was going to do. He overcame death and the grave, and as a result of that, uh, we have his promise, his guarantee that he uh, will bless us uh, as a result of, of his death and resurrection. And he will be with us as we find ourselves in this time of, of exile. So what does, that, what does that mean? Well, I think our reading for today from John 20, verses 10 through 23, kind of fleshes that out. This promise that God is with us and will bless us. Uh, it's the story of Jesus appearing to Mary Magdalene and then to his uh, disciples. And uh, what happens as a result of, of that? Let me read it for you. From John chapter 20, verse 10 through 23. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not returned yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Um, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive, any, forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Well, it's quite a story and a, a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on there on that first Easter morning. We know that Peter and John had raced to the tomb. They got there. They were, uh, as the scripture says, they still didn't understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. They were, they were confused. Mary was there in her sorrow and her confusion. And uh, she looks in the tomb. She sees these angels. Uh, they ask her, why is she crying? Who is she looking for? Uh, and then Jesus appears, a uh, woman, he's, why are you crying, he says. Uh, and uh, thinking he was the gardener, uh, she says, uh, you know, where have you put him? I will, I will get him. And then it's kind of an imperative right here what happens. Jesus said to her, Mary. Uh, Jesus called her by name. Uh, Jesus called her by name. And what a powerful effect it had on her. Uh, she immediately recognized Jesus for who he was. Now, it's kind of interesting if you look through scriptures, how scripture connects. Uh, we used this passage way back, I don't know if it was in March or April, we were looking at Isaiah 43. Uh, listen to these words from Isaiah 43. But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, who, who, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. 
Amazing. What does Jesus do? He calls Mary by name. Her eyes are opened. And then there's this section that's very intriguing. G Mary grabs a hold of Jesus' feet, I'm guessing, and he says, don't hold on to me. I haven't yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them. It's interesting how I think Jesus is saying how, how we want to hold on to the things of this world. And Jesus says, we got to let go of the things of this world and hold on to the truth. Uh, to hold on uh, to the one who has been raised from the dead, uh, Jesus, our, our Savior. Um, and we want to hold on to the things of this world, but Jesus says, hold on, hold on to what I have told you, Mary, that I am your Savior. Uh, and so she, uh, she runs back and tells the disciples, and then Jesus appears to them. Um, and it's amazing. He, he reveals himself to his disciples. He speaks words of peace over them. Peace be with you. He says it twice. Peace be with you. He shows him his hands and his side. This is real. This is not a ghost or an aberration. Uh, this is real. And then Jesus, he gives them a purpose. He gives them a purpose. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus gives us a purpose. We've been called by name. Uh, we have a place in the family. He gives us peace. He fills us with his spirit, and he gives us a purpose to bring healing to the world. And that healing comes through love and forgiveness. What Jesus did for us he now uh, empowers us to bring to the world. And so we seek to be people who are following Jesus uh, together. We're in this together. We have a purpose. We have a meaning. Life is not just day to day. Life has purpose and life has meaning. To be these people, God's people, who have been called by name, who bring healing to a broken world as we point people to Jesus the one who loves us and who has forgiven us through his death and resurrection. And that is good news. <laughs> and, and even as we journey and sojourn in this world, we have a purpose and we are not alone. As, Jesus, as, as uh, our Lord says, I am with you and I will bless you. And so we want to hold on to that today. Uh, we want to hold on to the truth that Jesus brings, uh, even as we live in, in the world, and be people who are living a life on purpose, uh, following Jesus together as we bring healing uh, through love and forgiveness uh, to a world that so desperately, desperately needs it. And so today on our journey, we seek to be people who are in the world, uh, but who are not of it, who are different, uh, who live as this resurrected people that Jesus has made us to be through his death and his resurrection. What a day uh, to celebrate uh, that fact, uh, what Jesus has done, done for us. Well, a couple things in our prayers. Uh, we pray for our Christmas for Community event that will be coming up uh, in December, December 12th. We're excited about that. An opportunity to bring some good news to our community, uh, bring them the message of, of Jesus and uh, uh, the good news that our Savior, our Savior has, has come um, and that he will come again to take us to be with him. And the journey will one day be over. Um, we also pray for, obviously, uh, COVID-19 uh, and all the impacts that it's having, uh, and that we would be able to see, see in a new way, uh, that God would give us uh, would give us vision in these these days um, to see and behold that our Savior has indeed come, even in the midst of this exile. I uh, didn't see any other prayers. Frida Krieger will pray for. Uh, she is down at, uh, let's see, I have it here, Alden Estates down in Shorewood uh, and doing some rehab, and we pray for her that the Lord would be with her and strengthen her in this time. 
uh, pray for other families who are dealing with uh, health issues and others who are dealing with health issues as well. So let me pray. Father, we come to you today uh, in our waiting. Uh, we prepare for the promise that is Jesus Christ. Open our hearts and minds to loving and knowing you more deeply and expansively than the day before. Uh, what a privilege, Lord, it is that we have to be people who are following you together. People who have been called, uh, have been made a part of the family, who have been given peace even in these difficult days, uh, so that we can be people with a purpose. Uh, as we carry the, the message of healing and hope uh, to a world that so desperately needs it. Uh, Lord, we want to do that. We want to be a church that reaches out um, and brings good news and help, help us to do that uh, with our Christmas, uh, Christmas, Christmas for our community event that will be taking place uh, uh, in a couple of weeks. We just ask that all the details would fall into place and that you would use it as an opportunity for us to bless our community. Uh, we pray for uh, COVID-19 and all the uh, consequences that we're dealing with, and sickness and illness and losses and pain and uncertainties and fears, Lord. Uh, give us your peace in our exile. Uh, we pray for Frida today, Lord, that you would be with her, Frida Krieger, uh, in her time of rehab and that you would bless her and strengthen her and relieve her pain so that she could uh, return home uh, again. Uh, Lord, uh, there are others for, for whom we pray and lift up. Uh, and we ask your, your blessing on, on them. Uh, we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. A uh, couple of other things. You're welcome to join us uh, tomorrow night, 6.30, Wednesday night, uh, for our, from our home to yours, as we'll be doing our family Advent devotional. Uh, modeling that for you. Hopefully you've already started that, uh, that you have picked up your devotional book, uh, God With Us, and uh, that you've already started with your family uh, and beginning to use this as an opportunity to really pr prepare uh, for our Lord's coming. And so we're excited about that tomorrow night and just hope we can get as many people on as, as possible to join us uh, as, we, as we take a time to set aside a little time uh, each day uh, to really prepare for our Lord's coming and our celebration that is to come. Good to be with you this morning. Uh, God's blessings to you guys, and you all have, have a great day uh, today, and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Uh,